Hey collectors, well, here we are again. I think this is unboxing number 61. Uh, and today is January 19th, 2023. So, there we go. We got that established. Uh, you'll have to bear with me a little bit. I got a loose tooth here that's wiggling around and it's um, pretty painful. So, I got to go get that yanked out. So, I guess uh, the next time you see me here on the video, I'll have a big gap in my teeth, which you can all write in about and laugh at me but uh, or maybe I can get something stuck in there I don't know we'll see but anyhow I'm going to do the best I can with this tooth here uh, I don't think we have a a lot of stuff again uh, um, I, I don't know what it is we'll see uh, I think we got four or five boxes here uh, and then there's a couple of things that I bought at a small show outside of New York with Robbie last weekend. We'll show you that too. Uh, but I think I'll lead it off first with a, a little drink. Here's to you all. Got to start with that. Oh yeah, that's uh, too strong, but it tastes good. And uh, I like to light up one of my Denobolis here and Mm-hmm. So we're ready to go, and uh, I thought the first thing I would show you, I I bought this, uh, this thing uh, a couple of days ago, and I, I think it's really neat. Um, as you may have guessed by the, uh, the cover on it, it's a typewriter, uh, but it's a typewriter that should interest everybody. It's made by a company, uh, I don't know what it is, uh, uh, Seidel and Norman or Nauman, uh, and this is a, a World War II German typewriter, uh, and everything works on it. Uh, the, um, the return lever here is a little loose, that could use some looking at, but the rest of it is all in great shape. And as you can see, if you look at the keys, there we have number three has the uh, SS runes above it, and it works. See that? And then also, uh, because it's a German typewriter, uh, we have the letters with the umlauts also here. See, we have the A and the U and the O. So this typewriter is still in uh, working order in relatively nice condition uh, I don't know what anybody could do with it other than make uh, fake documents I guess but that's not what the purpose of it is uh, it's just neat to have uh, something like this it uh, it probably could use a uh, a new ribbon um, but other than that um, it's it's almost ready to go might be fun to type some letters on it so I thought you would like that I think it's interesting it's the first first time I've ever owned one of these so it's uh, it's kind of cool all right we'll get that out of here you guys ever have a typewriter from the period I know I could probably still use that. I'm an old hunt and peck guy. I I used to type uh, uh, my college buddies' term papers uh, back in the 1960s. I think I used to get five or ten bucks a piece or something for that, but it really gave me a good skill in that. So I'm I'm a pretty good typer, even though I'm hunt and peck. I can pretty much keep up with somebody that actually knows how to type because I've been doing it so long. So, okay, enough of that. Oh, well, look at our, our first, our first box here and, uh, and see what we have. I, I hope it's something interesting. Mm. Ah, that's interesting, yeah. Yep, let's see the best way to get this baby open. 
looks like a cut along the, this thing here. Let's see if we can get to it. No, that wasn't as good as I thought it would be. I guess we have to go down further here. Let's see whether this works any better. Yeah, here we go. Uh, here's the banner, Tom. Hope you like it. So that's the little note. And it looks like we have a uh, uh, a nice. Um, a nice flag or something here. You can always use those kind of things, and uh, you know this one is uh, this is an interesting one. This is a uh, you no, know, it's a banner, and it's a, uh, a Studentenbund. You can you guys get the idea what they look like, and it has uh, it has four hangers uh, on the top of it. Just one missing here. It's all uh, separate construction, and uh, the back of it is all red. It's uh, two piece put together. So uh, yeah, I uh, I like that, sir. That's not something we see all the time. I'll just <coughs> so you can get the size of it here. You can see there. That's how big it is, and just a real quick. Uh, <laughs> that's all you get. Uh, you know, political correctness, guys. What am I going to do? I have to have to abide by the rules and all that so but uh, but that's a pretty cool thing you like that of yeah it's very nice yeah that's not something you see very often it's always one clip missing it seems like too yeah not that big a deal well they really didn't reinforce them very well to tell you the truth well I mean they weren't really under a lot of pressure just kind of hanging there and Let's see what we got in this bag here. Well, it looks like uh, maybe some more kind of flags here. I don't know. Feels like flags. Yep. Yeah, here we go. Well, this one uh, looks like a Kriegs flag. Nice condition all throughout. Uh, is that a veteran's flag? Uh, you might be right. I don't know. Let me let me get a glance out of here without making trouble. And yeah, you know. Yep, that's it. Bob is right. Yep. It's a veteran's flag. It's folded in half, but you guys can get the idea. Uh, that's a. This is really a good flag. Yeah, you got the iron cross and the big swaths in there. Those are great flags. Yeah, that's something you don't see very often, and it's in really nice condition too. Wow, I like that. You know, that's a kind of a rare, kind of a rare piece there, and so that's a goodie. And let's see what we got here. Uh, this appears to be a NSDAP banner or flag. It's um, a printed center area with a separately sewn field. And it looks in lovely condition. Boy, it's really... Uh, oh, it's a, um, it's a vehicle flag. See, we can tell that by the... Uh, the grommets. They were used to hold these flags down uh, to show. Is that two grommets on one two, two grommets in one place. <laughs> it's uh, never seen that before, but uh, uh, there you go. It, and it's original, no question about it. So uh, these uh, vehicle flags are usually single sided. Let's see, what, yeah, this one is um, single sided. And it's a uh, it's a very nice uh, very nice example. Uh, looks really pristine. So there we go. It looks like it's um, cloth day so far, guys. But that's okay, isn't it? There's a lot of we saw a lot of a lot of flags here. We we uh, 
Um, we try to uh, photograph them nicely, uh, which is not easy to do, especially when you have some of these large flags and poor Robbie drives himself crazy trying to uh, get them. Sometimes the sun's on them and then it, then you see through them or it, it looks like they're all stained when they're not or then you you got an area that's shady and so you sort of have to uh, pick the right time of day, the right kind of sun or no sun and then you just get the thing all set up and then the wind blows and, <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing you yeah. know, the thing, oh it's a... Uh, Poor Robbie goes crazy with that. Isn't that true, Ob? Yeah. That's your... We need a warehouse. Yeah. Yeah, we need a big warehouse inside where you could do it, but of course we don't have that. And uh, most of our flags we photograph on a fence that's uh, outside of my house. And and then the big ones we, we take down to a, a shed I have where I keep my um, my old Cadillac. So that works pretty good, too. But the, the thing with um, offering flags, you have to be able to show them to the customer and that's, uh, it's really somewhat difficult. And then I also, I try to stand next to them so that you can uh, tell how big they are too. Because, you know, it could be just a little one by one thing. You don't know in a picture unless you have something there for proportion. So you got my face to look at too get an idea of the size. Mm. Uh, so, let's see what we got here. This this feels a little heavier than a flag, Ob. See the best way to go about this one. My trusty Bob Burns razor cutter here. Working good as usual. Yeah. There we go. Let's see whether that did the trick here or not. No, it didn't. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll try this method here. A little lower. Yeah, I think that was the secret. Well, we're still not there, guys. So far, so good. <coughs> well, we got some, got a little letter here. I don't know what that all says, but uh, uh, I don't know. Let's, let's just look. Let's just look at what we got, and we'll read the mail later, huh, guys? What the heck? It's all about here. Yeah. Oh, it does look like we got we got some edge weapons here, I do believe. Somebody also uh, they threw a party pin in here too, it looks like. Don't want to lose that. Yep. Oh yeah, that's uh yeah, that's a good piece. That's a good one with the back of that thing and all. That's a, that's that's a good You like those things, Ob? You yes, like that, that one? DVG, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a pretty good one. And we'll see what else we have here. Uh, well, it looks like a, a long bayonet. Yeah, just a, just a long bayonet, it's a coral icorn there, you can see that, but uh, no big deal, but but they're all good um, starter pieces and everybody needs a bayonet in their collection and these are, these are very reasonable. 
So it's a good starting out item. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Well, wow, looks like a looks like a first model look, Waffa. But we're missing something. Yep. No chain on it. Uh, but it's still it's a it's a nice uh, nice early one with the good um, uh, sun wheel medallions and so forth, and uh, the leather is quite good on it also. Oh, look at this! Wow. I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> Look at that, Ob. Yeah. Three screws. That is really, really interesting. It must be something real early on and wow, let's see who made this piece. It's got a nice, uh, real nice blade on it. Yeah, it's a WKC. So that must have been one of their real early ventures. It does have metal in the scabbard. It's not a uh, composite scabbard that's just uh, uh, leather only. Huh, it's not something. I mean, I guess, I guess they thought, well, rather than put screws in all of the, the edges of the mounts, they just put screws in the center. And it seems to have worked fine. I don't know. I don't. Have you guys ever seen that before? I, I've been doing this a long time, and uh, uh, I'm not. I, I, I don't know for sure, but I think I've sold hundreds of first model Luftwaffe's, and I don't remember ever seeing that. They should have screwed the chain on too. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see if we can find a chain for this example. But I kind of like that. Uh, I always like to see um, unusual things, uh, especially something we've never seen before, and it, you can see it's absolutely original, and you like that, Ob? Yeah, it's cool. It is cool. I think that's kind of kind of good. And I like the party pin, too. So thank you, sir. That's some interesting things there. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's uh, isn't it funny, guys? How you uh, years and years and you don't see something, and then all of a sudden, the first time, it just no uh, no end to this hobby and the variations and and I guess with a Luftwaffe like that, maybe it was made uh, very early on, and WKC was trying to figure out what's the best way to to handle this and uh, so they use those screws but um, apparently they didn't carry on with that because their daggers are basically normal after that so you guys that collect that kind of stuff that's a kind of a cool thing and let's see what we got next here another small box Doesn't look like we have any swords this time, Ob. They're all fairly small boxes, but we'll see. Could be mini swords. Yeah, right, a mini sword, that's right. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Oh good, another sock. <laughs> and something to blow my nose on too. So there we go. Let's see what this could be. Wow. Oh, what a lovely, lovely little youth knife here. Look at that, the, uh, the paint's original. And uh, look at the plating on the hilt. It's very heavy, so I'm sure that's this is a steel base too. Boy, the leather's really nice. Wow, look at that! No wear underneath the uh, leather strap. The insignia is perfect. 
I love the paint too. The paint is mint on the back. Look at that. Mint condition. Wow. Let's see what the... Uh, yeah, nice blade. It uh, has a motto on it. It does have a Ricasso, so it was made uh, probably after 36. Um, but it, the motto means that it was made before 38 anyhow. Uh, the motto is, is, it's all there. It's a little bit light, but the blade is in beautiful um, condition. No sharpening or any, any problems. And uh, let's see who made this baby. Well, now I see why it's so nice. It, um, it's made by J.A. Henkels, and it has uh, their RZM M710, and it's dated 1937. And I see something here. I don't know what this little mark is. I can't really read it. Um, may have had uh, something to do with a distributor or whatever. Let me, let me put my glasses on, and perhaps I can see it then. Um, it has a name, uh, and then Mainz underneath. Mainz was a city, so apparently that was uh, maybe the store that um, that sold this piece. That's very interesting. You don't see that kind of stuff on youth knives very often. So uh, I really like this one. Uh, that's a real collectible piece, and. Uh, in very very fine condition you don't see many that are that nice as you guys know if you're looking for Hitler youths it's uh, uh, you look at uh, an awful lot of, uh, of total wrecks so it's it's fun to see a, uh, a nice one like this and uh, there's a uh, uh, the letter from the guy uh, he bought he bought this from me, uh, let's see when he bought it, uh, um, 2020 in November, and um, he wants to sell it, so I'm more than happy to, to buy it from him, because uh, probably Hitler Youth Knives are more popular now than they were in 2020, but alright guys, so after that Hitler Youth Knife, which is a nice one. We'll see what else we got. Mm -hmm. Ah, good. Let's see what is next here. Ah, it looks like something coming from overseas. Let's see the best way to open this one. By the way, too, I'll mention to you guys uh, that are overseas in Europe or Australia, New Zealand, whatever. Um, uh, we we deal internationally, and we get um, pieces from all over the world. And a, a lot of um, collectors say, "Oh, I'm afraid to uh, uh, to send it to America. It's allowed to get lost in the mail." Um, We've never had anything lost in the mail that comes from um, overseas, and the service is generally very, very good. So um, don't worry about that kind of stuff. It's uh, it's the same as mailing it to somebody next door. Okay, let's, let's see what we got here. Oh, I like the bag already. Uh, let's see what this is all about here. Wow. Uh, this is a nice, um, a very nice um, naval dagger in the scabbard backwards. <laughs> but look at that grip. Beautiful, um, beautiful orange grip. And, um, and then we have one of those changeover pommels, too. This dagger would have originally had a ball top. We can tell that because it has the 1937 changeover pommel, and you know those because the the recesses in the wings are more, and the uh, 
uh, the wreath is vaulted outward and so forth and let's see and it's got a obviously original knot on it oh that's one we don't see too often uh, it's a horster nice blade uh, in it's a lightning or um, is it a yeah it's a fouled anchor blade uh, with the horster mark on there and uh, no, it's is it not? No, it's not. It's a sailing ship blade. I'm sorry, Ob. You're trying to take pictures of it. It's a nice sailing ship blade, uh, which makes sense if it had a ball pommel on it. The earlier daggers many times had sailing ship blades. Get that, Ob. Yeah, I, I like that piece a lot. No dings in the scabbard or anything. Shows some wear. It's not a, it's not a mint piece, but it's still very very nice and very collectible. So that's that's good. Thank you, sir. Appreciate this dagger. Certainly something that we can use here. All right. Let's see what else we got. Another small box here. Let's see what's in this baby. Good Whitman, you did it right that time. Came right open. Well. Looks like another really nice bag. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, yeah. Wow. It looks like we got a uh, we got an SS dagger. Some, okay, that's, that's a little note there and. Uh, Let's see what this one looks like. Um, it's uh, got an anodized scabbard and a, uh, a nice grip. Looks like icorn cross guards on it. The grip is in good shape. Shows a little use, but not bad. All right, and no, uh, no group stamping, district stamping on the guard, but yeah, I like this anodized scabbard, and let's see what else we got here. Ooh, a really nice, um, beautiful blade. Mina Era Heist Troya. That blade is mint. And let's see what the reverse, oh! Oh, here we go, yeah. Um, here you're going to see a um, an RZM uh, which is the uh, 941-36 SS, and below that is the early Icorn trademark. So what this is, collectors, this is one of the rarely seen uh, Icorn pieces that were originally made as Rome daggers, and then, uh, of course, Rome was done away with, and... Um, Icorn had a number of these daggers left over, and uh, so they they took the Roman inscription off, and then by 1936 they were ready to resell them, so that's why they have the RZM mark on them. So they resold them then. So this is a very collectible variation. Um, yeah, and what we like to see too. It's got the uh, inspection number on there that would have been on the original Rome pieces. And it has no, um, has no district number because the dagger was probably never issued as a Rome. It was just laying in the factory and then reissued in 1936. So that's a, um, that's a very, very good piece and um, 
and very interesting to uh, uh, you guys that collect um, SS types. So I like that one a lot. That's a goodie. Okay. Well, it's always nice to see an SS dagger, huh, guys? It'd be a shame to have an unboxing without at least one SS dagger, right? So, there we go. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, got a medium sized box. It's fairly heavy. We'll see. I gotta light this cigar again. I'm sorry. Taking up your time. Taking up your time with my awful habits. And a little sip too. Another awful habit. Mm. Oh yeah. I'll have to get a refill up. Okay. Can't get through one of these with just one drink. Let's see what we got here. You should have a drink cart set up next to you. Yeah, a drink cart, right. Well, let's see what we got here. Okay. A little note there to me. Here, well, well, this is a obviously a helmet, guys. See what it looks like. Uh, a lot of you guys like helmets, and uh, I like them too. I'm no real expert on helmets, but I'm. Um, kind of getting used to things and uh, I do my best with it and uh, and when I don't know I have it checked out with the, the famous Kelly Hicks he's a nice man and he'll he'll tell you just what you got if you don't know at least I found him to be that way and let's see what we got here uh, oh well oh, this is a it's an M40 Luftwaffe. Uh, we know it's a 40 because the rim is bent over like they were. The, the, the 42s, there's no bend in the rim, they're straight. But uh, that decal is in um, very nice condition. And the uh, finish of the helmet is all there. I mean, it's, uh, it looks very, very good. Rim is nice. And uh, on the inside, we have uh, the liner is still there. Uh, the uh, drawstring is gone, and the chin strap is gone also. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, it's still a uh, a nice helmet. Let's see if it's it's marked. Um, let's see if I can see that. Uh, hmm. It looks like, yeah, there it is. It's, um, it's Q54. And then if there's a number in the back. There usually is a run number. Yeah, that's all there, too. Something DN3E8 or something. I don't know. But, uh, but that looks like a, a real good helmet to me. You like that one, Hub? Yeah, nice decal. Yeah, nice decal, nice finish. Uh, nothing wrong with that baby at all. No. So that's kind of a good thing. Alright, we'll get to the next box. Let's see what comes up. Oh, we got a big box here, guys. Real big one. These are always tough on poor old Whitman, but uh, I'll do the best I can here. My 
Bob Burns cutter here. Let's see whether that did any good. Yeah, maybe. Getting there anyhow. I want to spill my drink or light the box on fire from my cigar. Free bubble wrap, of course. I'm not hiding behind the box, it's just the only way I can get it here, guys. Uh, boy, the suspense is killing me. How about you guys, huh? Killing Ravi, I can see that. Still more stuff up. Oh, oh, I'm seeing what this is. Yeah. Yeah, this is gonna this is gonna be cool. Yeah, this is gonna be cool guys. I can I can see already that we're looking at an original piece here. Okay guys, I think you see what we got here. Uh, this is a, um, looks like a 27 inch um, a Bonschutz Railway Eagle, uh, a real beauty, got good detail throughout and, uh, and we know it's original, it still has the, uh, the threaded studs on it. See that guys? You don't see many with the, the full the full length of the studs is here. So the vet that uh, liberated this eagle went through the trouble of taking all the nuts off and everything and uh, instead of just you know hacksawing them like so many of them you see. And uh, this is um, made by one of the, the biggest makers we see, the PS group. Um, they have their name uh, Mark there, and uh, the LOK is for locomotive, and the, this is all for. Um, uh, it's made out of aluminum. Um, forget what this is, and silicon. That's the mixture of the metal. Magnesium. Magnesium, yeah. And here's the uh, the markings again. RZA five. You see RZA five a lot, and BLN. That stands for um, Berlin. Uh, but uh, this is a uh, this is a very very good eagle. Um, look at that baby, huh? Uh, these are really really hard to come by and uh, uh, very much in demand. I mean, who wouldn't want this over their collection of daggers, huh? Uh, I'm very thrilled uh, to get that piece and. Uh, just great so I I hope you like that all right I'll get some of this paper put away here okay guys uh, we uh, got that railway eagle put back and uh, uh, that's all the boxes that I had come in but I mentioned at the beginning of the video that uh, 
uh, Ob and I did go to a, a show outside of New York City. Uh, the show opens at 6.30 in the morning, so you really got to get up early to get to this show. But we were there, and uh, it was amazing, uh, the crowd that was all there, all in the dark. The sun hadn't come up yet, so but it was worth it. I'll show you what we got. I had to make myself another drink, but uh, that's okay. And I have a cigar here, and oh. I'm gonna drop that in there. And let's see what, the... what we got here. Uh... Show you these first. There's no no great shakes here, but. Uh... But uh, uh, there were some some decent uh, army daggers there. Uh, uh, show you this one first. This is kind of nice. It's a um, it's a, a Robert Class, and um, like we like to see on Class is a generic uh, B uh, hilt mounts with a nice grip and uh, a nice uh, a scabbard. And uh, as I tell you on the class on most of them but not all of them you see those little asterisks on the uh, scabbard bands that's something you want to see and then uh, then we got a beautiful um, nickel plated blade has a little rub there in the plating but uh, otherwise it's um, it's a very very nice mint um, mint blade uh, the reverse is still perfect and the uh, class um, uh, stamping uh, and I didn't take it apart but I can assure you that it'll have the little hole in the uh, tang here which class did when they nickel plated their blades so uh, so that's a pretty nice uh, pretty nice piece that's that and then here's a uh, an icorn uh, with the straps and uh, and the original knot and so forth that um, uh, the knot shows um, a bit of wear and the straps are um, commensurate with the wear of the knot but the dagger itself is still in um, choice condition uh, textbook icorn fittings and well a, a really really fine mint blade there uh, just like you like to see them, needle-like tip, all the cross grain in it, and uh, then it's marked on the back with the um, the small uh, 3541 stamping. When you see that stamping like that, that small stamping, this dagger was made in 1940. So um, that's kind of nice to know. So that's a uh, that's a decent piece. And let's see what this one is. Uh, uh, what do we got here? A uh, oh, this is a, an ENF Horster. It's got the uh, Horster cross guard on it, and uh, kind of a generic type scabbard, which they used later on. And the original porta piece in really nice um, condition. And yeah, a great. Uh, great blade on that example you know it's uh, and there's that horster mark on the reverse of the blade so yeah I know they're just army daggers but uh, we all need to have oh three or four or five army daggers in our collection why not they're beautiful things and uh, especially if they're in uh, nice condition too uh, that adds a lot to them. Um, what else I got here? Uh, yeah, I like this piece. I bought this piece too. Uh, I didn't buy this from a, a dealer. I bought it from a, um, a collector. And um, uh, when you look at the piece, you're, you're going to say, well, um, 
what's different about this dagger? It looks like an army dagger, but oh my goodness, it's got a Luftwaffe scabbard with it, and the hangers, uh, according to the man I bought it from, are original to the dagger, as is the scabbard. Um, you wonder, well, why would a uh, why would an army dagger have a Luftwaffe scabbard? Uh, well, it could have got changed in a poker game, or who knows? Uh, uh, maybe it was just issued in error that way. I don't know, uh, but I can tell you this: when you look at the look at the top of the scabbard there, and you can see that this dagger has always been. Uh, with this um, icorn cross guard. See how the silhouette of the uh, the wreath and the eagle is still there on the scabbard and the hangers match the uh, the wear of the dagger. Uh, but then there's a little more to this piece too. I mean the blade the blade is mint as you can see beautiful blade and then on the uh, reverse uh, we have a little a nice little dedication uh, done very well. Uh, Eram Leiben Kameraden Die Alte Garde 31 3, 1939. So it was a uh, gift to a comrade from the old guard. Uh, and uh, the engraving is uh, done very, very well. I like this piece a lot. When I um, when I first when I first bought the piece, I thought, well, I can just I can just change uh, the Luftwaffe scabbard to a, an Army Icorn scabbard. But then when I got to looking at it and I could see where this has always been together, I thought that it would be best to leave it together, and I think it makes for a a, a rather interesting dagger. Uh, I like it a lot, and uh, uh, I think somebody else will too. It's uh, quite cool. Mm. You never know what you're going to run into, guys, you know. I mean, it's like that Luftwaffe we showed earlier with the screws in the back of the mounts. Here's an army dagger and a Luftwaffe scabbard. Sure, it could have it got changed around years ago. Uh, could have got changed during the time, uh, who knows, but what we do know is that it has always uh, been like this since the war, so it's best to kind of keep things like that because it provides uh, uh, interest in a collection, you know. Uh, I think it does anyhow. And uh, another, another piece I bought there, uh, uh, it's just a navy dagger, uh, and it's it shows some uh, usage and so forth. It's a it's a WKC example, but it the lightning bolt scabbard is still in nice condition. The grip is still in fine condition, uh, and it's and it's got a um, a beautiful um, mint blade on it. Just they don't come any nicer than that. Um, and then what you see with uh, with WKC, they they always mark their pieces on the obverse Ricasso, not the reverse. Uh, so there's the uh, the knight head, and the uh, the WKC initials are really light. You can you see the WK, but the C didn't even make it in the stamp. But that's the kind of stuff that you see. Nothing to worry about. And uh, you can see it's been well worn. The uh, the the um, uh, off red felt washer is just about worn out. But overall, it's still a very collectible, nice nice example. And then the uh, the last thing I bought at that show on the way out the door, uh, I like this piece a lot. And uh, you guys are going to say, what what's wrong with that piece? Well. You're looking at a uh, an NSKK, and you say, "Well, gee, look at that center ramp. It's way down the bottom of the scabbard. That can't be right." Uh, well, 
it is right guys uh, what this is is a field upgrade piece um, in other words the original where he already had an NSK dagger NSKK dagger and uh, he thought well I'm not going to buy a, a whole new dagger and so forth I'll just get the assembly and have it mounted by a local craftsman so he, he got the chain assembly uh, and it's all all good the links are good and um, they got the uh, the squared off uh, holes that you want to see see those um, see right there how they're they're square on the one end and domed on the other end that's the shape you want to see and the um, the reverse uh, it's um, it's marked RZM M5-8 which was the common Asman proof mark that you see uh, on this top link and then on the bottom link at, at the uh, the other chain has the NSKK uh, Mustershut stuff but uh, it's a very interesting piece um, the scabbard uh, ramp is just what you want to see I think I've told you before when you look at these ramps uh, it's great when you see the eyelet here is the same size as the eyelet up here and of course you want to make sure that the uh, the chain is original too so this was a dagger that was worn this way that's the way it hung nothing wrong with that looks funny because you're not used to seeing it but it's a fine original piece and I'll, and I'll show you the dagger too of course it's an early dagger because remember I told you the guy didn't want to buy a new dagger uh, it's not in bad shape at all has a nice bright blade Alice for Deutschland uh, and then it's got the um, the Carl Heidelberg trademark uh, which was the uh, uh, the beer bottles kind of a desirable maker and uh, it has a group of mark uh, WF so that's a uh, that's a very interesting piece uh, I like it a lot it's um, very collectible uh, the paint on the scabbard is um, absolutely original and it's all there hundred percent so um, so a good a good NSKK chain dagger there what we we call them the uh, the field upgrade type I guess I'm burning a hole in the cloth here well, so that's um, that's all I have to to show you here for this uh, unboxing, and I hope you enjoyed it. There was uh, nothing ultra rare, although I like seeing that uh, that train eagle. I'm sure you guys like those things. Everybody does, and they're just impossible to find these days uh, and of course you got to worry about repros and all too but that one is a, a absolute original beauty so there you go um, good collecting to you mm. good collecting to you and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and um, uh, see you all next month at the SOS show thanks a lot for watching and if I can help you with anything uh, please send me an email. Thanks a lot.